everyone, I'm Julie Waters with Glendale 11, your City Connection. Today, we are sitting down and having a chat with one of the new owners of the NHL's Coyotes, Anthony LeBlanc. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Julie. So a question that you probably get asked every day. Okay. How's it going? Um, it's going well. Uh, a lot of work to do in, in the uh, short period of time that we've had since we closed the transaction. Uh, but this week is the first week where it's starting to have a bit of a semblance of normalcy for us. Uh, obviously the first couple of weeks we had to focus on some fairly major business transactions that were, uh, were required because of the fact that uh, we took this franchise over so close to the beginning of the, uh, of the start of the season. Right. But uh, no, things are going very, very well. Uh, we have some fairly major business announcements that will be coming out over the next week or two. And but the most important thing is the fact that just over a week from now we drop the puck yeah. on the regular season which we yeah. are so excited about. Yep, opening night. So it was about early August Correct. when things became official. Um, you just kind of, you talked about a few things. Are there any specifics, anything really exciting that's happened since you took over that you can talk about or brag about a little to us that's been really uh, an accomplishment? Well, I, I think the main accomplishment is uh, some of these announcements that I, unfortunately I can't give specifics, but there's some fairly major ones that we've been working on, obviously on the television side uh, and with some of our sponsors. And as I said, as, as we finalize those those agreements over the next couple of days and weeks, uh, they will start to come out. But yeah, I, there, there is certainly a sense of pride amongst the ownership group that we've been out able to accomplish as much as we have in such a short period of time but uh, really what we're most proud of is is the work that was done before we even got here which is the work on the hockey side of the operation Don Maloney and Dave Tippett yeah. have done such a marvelous job and we just can't wait for the season to start yeah lots of excitement you can feel it so let's talk about the city of Glendale hmm. uh, you've really kind of gotten to know the city a lot Absolutely. more now that you're entrenched in the community and stuff like that um, what are your thoughts on the city of Glendale what have you learned about Glendale that maybe you didn't know before well I, I didn't realize how many core hockey fans were in the West Valley that were here in the city of Glendale. Uh, so that's obviously been exciting to us. But, but you know, the, the thing that we've learned very quickly is just what a beautiful community it is. Uh, obviously, we have the pleasure of, of working here, uh, and, and most of us are in the process of buying homes here in the area, and uh, most of us are obviously looking here in Glendale. Uh, it, it's an area that, you know, many of us, like so many people in the country and in, in uh, the continent, don't know the city as well as they should. So we're really excited about partnering with the city of Glendale and, and doing what we can to encourage people to spend more time here not just for hockey games or football games because we think it's a wonderful community. That's great. That's really great to hear. Now there's a business agreement between the city of Glendale and mm -hmm. your ownership group. And Correct. In a nutshell basically the city has hired your ownership group to manage this facility. Right. The city owns Jobbing.com Arena of course. So um, it's, a, it's similar to how other professional sports groups are set up around the country where the sports team will manage the the day-to-day -day operations That's of the right. facility. Can you tell us some of your top priorities for managing this facility? And I'm going to assume that revenue is somewhere <laughs> up there at the top. Make some money. Well, I, I think that's important for all of us that, that we we maximize the revenue that can come through this building. But if, if you're asking what our most important priority is, it's to drive more events to the building. So we're working very closely with the local booking agencies, uh, the national booking agencies, so we can start seeing more concerts and, and just events in the building that currently, that I think that's the biggest uh, downside right now is that currently there aren't as many events in the building as there should be. So that's priority number one. Uh, but, you know, the bigger priority for us is to, to run this beautiful facility, and all of us feel the same way. And most of us have had the opportunity to spend a fair amount of time mm -hmm. in other buildings throughout, you know, the United States, Canada, and even Europe. This is a top top of the line building and we're just we're really thrilled to be to be able to be the group that's honored to be able to manage this uh, this uh, this building uh, but obviously it's it's hard to believe this building is 10 years old now yeah. and uh, that means you know it needs some refreshing in certain areas so we're working with our vendors on things like building out new suites um, meaning more party type suites that we want to build in the building we want to refresh the suites we want to refresh some of the, the seating areas uh, but those are things that we're going to work closely on with the city to make sure that we're doing the right things to maximize revenue that's great. That's really great to hear. So let's talk about the team. Please. Uh, you've had to make some changes along the way. Just kind of happens here and there. What do you think we can expect to see on the ice? Anything you want to? Well, I, th in I, on? I think everybody is going to be very happy with what they see on the ice. I mean, we're, what we're focusing on is what the team did two years ago when they made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, and we're so close to making that mm -hmm. the the elusive trip to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, but. Uh, I, Obviously, in the offseason, Don, Don Maloney and Dave Tippett did a great job of retaining the core of the organization, most importantly, re-signing goaltender Mike 
Smith. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to, to to Mike to have a fantastic year like he had two years ago. Uh, the biggest offseason move we made is, is bringing in Mike Ribeiro. And Mike came in at uh, the free agency period, which luckily opened three days after uh, the vote at the city of Glendale, which gave everybody the, 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 right. uh, the everyone knew at that point that the team was staying. Uh, and Mike was without a doubt probably the highest um, regarded point scorer that was available in the uh, free agency period. So we, we have a guy that last year when he played for Washington had a point a game, which is a, that's a really important metric to, to look at from a hockey player's perspective. We think he's going to add a lot of energy. And some of these young, uh, young kids basically that are coming up through the system are really exciting. Uh, so we've been spending a lot of time here uh, as right now we're, we're just finalized, we're finishing off the preseason and our training camp. And this is, this is an exciting team. I think a lot of people are going to be, uh, be pretty happy to be fans of the Phoenix Coyotes. Well, your enthusiasm is just so energetic. <laughs> I'm sure fans can feel it. I mean, I can just, I can feel it oozing from you. You know, Anthony, every sports team has players or managers that kind of become the face of the right. team or maybe uh, the values of that team. Mm -hmm. Couple names, um, Shane Doan. He's just, he's loved <laughs> in this community. And of course, Coach Dave Tippett, right. award-winning coach. Um, they didn't have to stay here in Arizona. Right. They, everybody knows the story. They, they could have left, but they did. Right. What a bonus for you. Well, quite frankly, I mean, Shane made the de he had to make the decision last year. And to your point, I mean, it just shows the character that Shane has. He's, he, everybody that meets Shane, you, you automatically love the guy because he's, he's just, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, there's nothing phony about him. He is just, he's a wonderful human being. He's a wonderful father. He's a great guy. But from our perspective, he's a heck of a hockey player, yeah. <laughs> which is which is pretty important. Uh, and he's a great captain. Uh, he's the longest serving captain in the National Hockey League right now. So uh, we're thrilled with Shane, but he made that decision last year, which is really, it's quite phenomenal when you think about the uncertainty that mm -hmm. was still in play. Uh, but you, you mentioned uh, Coach Tippett and GM Don Maloney. We were actually very direct in our negotiations with the National Hockey League that we were not interested in buying this franchise if those two individuals were not re-signed. So, but they didn't have to do it. They, wow. they definitely took a leap yeah. of faith. Both of those gentlemen did when they re-signed. Um, and really, they're the reason we're here. Um, so, that, so that you know, those are those are the types of individuals you want to yeah, have as the face of your franchise. Absolutely, there's a lot of leap of faith though that went on here yes. for a lot of other That's people, right. including you and the other owners. And I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of that involved in the past year. Well, sure. I mean, the, the reality is people will focus on the negativity, people will focus on the uncertainty and what that created in that four years that it was owned mm -hmm. by the National Hockey League. But what we had to focus on, I mean, the majority, myself and my my uh, nine partners, were all you know, business individuals who have, have had, you know, successful careers, be it in oil and gas or myself in technology. But you, when you look at an asset, you have to, you're not always looking for uh, what would be, you know, maybe considered the easiest mm -hmm. thing to buy. You want to find the diamonds in the rough. And our view is once we really dove into the, um, to the Coyotes and we saw what the team's been able to do on the ice, how the, th the attendance has increased in the last four years with so much uncertainty overhanging, and also things like television ratings. Television ratings have gone up dramatically in the last four years. We felt, you know what, if we can shore up the hockey side of the business and bring in some expertise on the business side, this can be a very important franchise in the National Hockey League. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. Let's talk about the fans because they are a critical piece yes, of all are. of this as well. Early on, you were quoted as saying, Coyotes fans are resilient and passionate. <laughs> That's now, an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, frankly, a lot of sports fans could be resilient and passionate mm -hmm. about what, whichever team that they are following. Now that you're in the thick of it and you're in this building every day and you're in this community and you're, you're being seen throughout the state of Arizona, what's your take on those fans now? Well, it, it, it just has reinforced my opinion of the fan base here, the resiliency and the passion that the fan base has really is second to none. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I am a Canadian, so that means I come from the, the country that feels that we are responsible for hockey and no one knows hockey better than we do. But I have to tell you, I have never seen a fan base stick through so many unfortunate circumstances like the fans here. And I tell each and every one of them whenever I get the opportunity to speak to them. And, and you're right, when especially when we have events in the building, when yeah. we've had one preseason game, we had a wonderful um, event raising money for the families in Yarnell, and we have a preseason game on Friday night. I spend as much time as possible just walking the concourse talking to the fans and it, it just it, it really is 
it's mind-boggling that all they want to do is thank us when we want to do the exact <laughs> yeah, opposite. We want to thank do. them yeah. for the tremendous support that they've provided to this franchise when we were not involved and the support we've seen from them since we've closed is really second to none. That's great. And I know on your to-do list is keeping those fans passionate. Correct. And as well as um, the folks who are helping run this building, mm -hmm. from the people taking the tickets to to the, the, the people doing the marketing and public relations right. every day and making sure the lights come on. How do you keep that support going? Are, are you just waking up every day and taking, <laughs> you know, extra vitamins of enthusiasm <laughs> and energy? Well, I mean, it, it's, uh, and thank you for earlier stating that, that you feel kind of uh, enthusiasm oh, oozing gosh, from yeah. us. Uh, and it's the same when you talk to any of my partners. Uh, we are so enthusiastic about this operation, but we know that it's the people that make the, the operation what it is and our focus isn't just on the hockey now that's the product that is the important product but uh, we're also very focused on our employees that as you said the, the ticket takers mm -hmm. the people that are selling the concessions uh, but you know most importantly are the fans and we we just uh, it, it's a constant dialogue we have to keep we have to be in the community and that's very important to myself and my partners is that we are a part of the community that's we're wonderful. not just we're not just the owners of a hockey team with that comes a responsibility and the responsibility is that we are here as a part of the community. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, now this might surprise you, <laughs> but there could be some people watching who have never been to a hockey game. <laughs> Understood. So what do you tell them? How do you sell it to them? How do you say, come on down, give it a shot? Well, I think people need to see this game live. Now, it has in, it's increased a uh, the ability to understand the game has increased in the last number of years with the evolution of high definition uh, television. I think that's really helped people appreciate the sport, but you still can't appreciate the speed and the physicality of this sport until you come watch mm -hmm. it live. And more importantly, the, the energy in the building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, what I ask, it's, it's like anything else. I ask people to just give us a chance. Give us one chance to come to this building, and I swear to you, you will be back for a second <laughs> and a third and a fourth game. But really, but what you're talking about is the onus is on us to entice people. And uh, hopefully people have seen the new marketing campaign we started rolling yeah. out, which we are very proud That's of. That's great. Uh, and you mentioned Shane Doan, and, and the fact he is the, f the, the face of the franchise. But we think we, we did a, we're, we're very proud of the accomplishment that we were able to uh, to do in such a short period of time and get that, uh, you know, the commercial that was released on the, uh, I believe it was on the opening day of the Cardinals season, uh, and to be able to play it in such a, you know, highly viewed yeah. uh, time slot, that has really helped. And it's, it, and there's no question that that combined with the stability that is now in place with the franchise, we're seeing every major metric that we look at, be it ticket sales, sponsorships, mm -hmm. suite sales, mm -hmm. they're all significantly higher. And combined with that, um, you talked about you have a huge focus on having other events programmed in this building. Mm -hmm. Throughout Absolutely. the entire year, that may be another way to get people down here. That's Correct. probably part of your your me method here. I would think you're you're dead on. I mean, we have to put more events in the building that entice people to mm -hmm. come to this building and see what a beautiful f facility it is. But we're doing other things to just increase the fan experience. So we made an announcement. Actually, I tweeted, uh, which is a, a new thing for me. I tweeted last week that um, we're getting ready to introduce a tailgating um, a tailgating series on weekend games, and that the re re the reaction we received from the fan base and the local media was was extraordinary so we are finalizing details but that is something that we think will in, entice mm -hmm. maybe the casual fan to say right. hey I love going to football games and right. tailgating right. the fact that the hockey team right. is gonna combine that that could help right. so uh, that's one example of many things that we're working right. and on. and as you get other events here for example concerts correct uh, family events different shows that might bring different people you know kind of diversify your crowd you're bringing them in. That's right. They're getting into the building. Correct. We yeah. need them to come into the building, and when they're here, we have to do a good job. For those other events, we have to do a good job sure. of selling the hockey product. So you're you're absolutely correct that but you, one of the good things when we purchase the franchise, we have a very solid group of individuals that are on the business side of the uh, of of the equation. Now, it, it was a smaller group than than should be, and we're building up that organization. But for example, a gentleman like Ted Santiago, who's our VP of Marketing, and Rich Narn, our mm -hmm. VP of Communications, both of these individuals have been here for a long time and they haven't had the ability to do the things that they wanted to do right. and to be able to unleash those guys on the business side has been very fulfilling right. and to have people work for you who are energetic and enthusiastic exactly. that's where it's all going it's Correct. just a great synergy so it's been quite a road you started <laughs> down one road years ago <laughs> yes, and did. you went this way and there's a little roadblock <laughs> I remember so then you turned around and you came and you found some other roads and you're here we're this, here 
This must feel like a dream come true. Yeah, it really is. I mentioned the fact that I'm a Canadian and you can't find a Canadian boy that doesn't want to be involved mm -hmm. in the National Hockey League. And I've said it, I think people think I'm joking, but unfortunately the reality is I'm not a very good hockey player myself. So if I'm going to be involved in this league, I have to do it in, uh, in the way that I've gone about sure. it in becoming an owner. But, you know, I'm one of, of as I said, nine individuals yeah. that I have. The best thing that's happened and the reason this deal was able to get done was putting together the ownership group. And, and you know, I have to, to give all of the, the kudos and thanks to uh, George Gosby, one of my partners, uh, our primary partner, who, who was able to put together this group of individuals that he's known for years and years yeah. that are passionate about hockey, uh, but passionate about business. So that, those, the, the combination is, is very important. But yeah, th that's why this deal was able to happen, yeah. is we, we have a great ownership group, but I, I also don't want to take away from the partnership that we've received from the City of Glendale. The City of Glendale really went above and beyond uh, to ensure that this team stayed here, because they knew the importance, and uh, we're, we're just thrilled to be a part of that. My final question for you. What is your hope? When you look <laughs> back on this in six months, a year, five years, ten years, what is your hope that well, you can say and see? First and foremost that we get to celebrate, if you look at the five-year plan, that at least once, if not twice, we've had a Stanley Cup parade down Glendale Avenue. Okay. I think that that would be, that is our, our ultimate goal. And goal number two is stop talking about ownership. Let's just focus on, on the product on the ice. And I think we'll get there. I think we're getting there. But people now need, they're, they're looking at us saying, okay, you guys came in, you had this big, you know, you had big hopes and dreams of what you think hockey can do in the desert. Show us. Show us that this okay. can be successful. The onus is on us, but we feel we'll get there. So those, those are the two primary goals. Win, a, win at least one Stanley Cup, if not multiple, and, um, and get people excited about this franchise and fill the building every night. Well, Anthony LeBlanc, thank you so much thank for you. your time. It was great Good. to sit and chat with you. Likewise. And, uh, keep up the great work with all the energy and thank enthusiasm. You. We thank will. you so much for joining Thanks. us.